Anita and Matt, for more on this, let's bring in senior advisor to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Ambassador Mark Regev joins us. Ambassador, uh, I want to pick up right where our reporter Matt Finn left off, a Hamas spokesperson uh, addressing the possibilities or lack thereof about more hostage negotiations. Here is what the Hamas spokesman said. There will be no prisoner swap deal or no negotiations under fire until the Israeli aggression ends. Meanwhile, we say that, that we are open to any initiative that can end this Israeli genocidal war. What can you tell us about any ongoing talks to start up hostage swaps again and this reported uh, delegation in Cairo possibly looking at a peace deal? Well, thank you for having me. The truth is the exact opposite of what the spokesman of Hamas just said. The Hamas isn't going to release hostages because they've suddenly become humanitarians. On the contrary, we're dealing with brutal, callous, bloodthirsty killers, and they will only respond to pressure. And as we beef up the military pressure on Hamas, as we continue to destroy its military machine and take out its senior leadership, I believe that that makes uh, uh, the possibility of a, a future release of, of, of our hostages more likely. It worked in November. It can work in January, too. Ambassador, I want to go back to what Mar uh, Matt Finn was saying also in there, talking about 85 percent of Palestinians displaced. The fighting has now been going on for nearly 90 days. So how long do you foresee uh, the, the fighting going and how long essentially will it take to achieve your main goal of eradicating Hamas? So this could be over very quickly. My prime minister said last week, he said that uh, Hamas fighters, uh, they can surrender or we'll get them and we'll take them out. But if they were to surrender, this would be over straight away. Unfortunately, that's unlikely. Hamas are ruthless. Hamas are fanatical. Some of them might fight to the end. And we have to be willing to do what it takes. Uh, and patience is required. I mean, we'd like this to be over quickly. But we know it could take longer. And there's no point in doing half measures. Because if we do half measures and Hamas stays in power, we'll just have another war in the near future. Because Hamas says openly that they are committed, uh, to quote directly from them, to a permanent war with Israel. And as one of their leaders said publicly, we would do, Hamas, would do the October 7th massacre again and again and again. So any sort of artificial ceasefire ahead of time, that's just a Band-Aid solution condemning us all to another Gaza war in the near future. We, we have to find a real solution. And a real solution is the destruction of Hamas's military capabilities and the end of their rule over the Gaza Strip. And Ambassador, I want to ask you about the country of South Africa filing a genocide case against Israel. And it would appear uh, more pressure being put on Israel to dial back uh, their offensive. The, the South African government has to be condemned for this. It's, it's cynicism, it's hypocrisy. They have a relationship with Hamas and they condemn Israel. Uh, Israel, a democratic country that abides by the rules of law, uh, the rules of war. Everything we've done has been in accordance with the rules of war, as done by other democratic countries in similar fights against terrorist organizations. Right. Uh, Hamas, on the other hand, is a brutal, genocidal organization. We saw the terrible violence that they were cap capable of on October 7th mm -hmm. when they stormed our border. They beheaded, they burned people alive, they shot children in front of their parents and parents in front of their children. They machine gunned over 300 youngsters attending a, a music festival. Brutal, brutal violence, including mass rapes. Yep. And yet, somehow, supposedly, Israel is the one that's uh, uh, against international law. No, it's Hamas that is the genocidal organization. And just finally, in the short amount of time we have left, what can you tell me about the possibility for escalation on your northern border uh, with Lebanon? So, un unfortunately, the possibility is there. And we are warning Hezbollah, if you escalate this conflict, 
uh, uh, we, we are ready and we are prepared. We don't want to see an escalation. But if you force an escalation, you will have to deal with Israel that is mobilized, Israel is ready, and you will face destruction more than you have thought was possible. We will take out and end the threat from the north. And Iran could well find itself paying a price as well. Former Israeli ambassador to the UK, Mark Regev. Mark, thank you very much. Happy New Year. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.